few weeks ago, Dr. Dietrich came into my office and asked me to talk about the naming of America. I know that when I was in school, what I was taught that was, quote, 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And I think you probably were taught the same. We were taught that his crew thought the earth was flat and that they were sailing out to fall off the edge of the world. But Columbus felt that the earth was round and he was out to prove it. He also thought if it was round that he was sailing to Asia for a shorter route to uh, get the spices and all that was in Asia. On that first point, I think it's been long accepted among educated people that the earth was round. In fact, sailors used the sextant looking at and could tell where they were with longitude and latitude based on that sextant. That proved the earth was round. Aristotle in uh, 325 BC said the earth was a sphere at the center of the universe and everything revolved around the earth. Along came Ptolemy in 100 AD. He proposed mathematical formulas, a geocentric theory that mathematically would prove Aristotle correct. Ptolemy also came up with the idea of placing a grid on the earth so that you could tell where places were based on longitude and latitude. Ptolemy also, in a very amazing statement, said, the world is made up of four continents, Europe, Asia, Africa, and a fourth continent that was separated from the, the, uh, the rest to the west by a great ocean. It was an unproven theory that re remained a mystery for some 1,400 years. But as long as we're talking about it, astronomy, Copernicus followed in 1514 in his little commentary and said that the sun was the center of the, the solar system and that all the planets, including the Earth, revolved around it. And just as the Earth's orbit was round, so was the Earth. I think when I was learning about Copernicus in college, one of my favorite Copernicus stories was when the medieval church said, no, the Earth is the center, and they charged him with heresy. And heresy was punishable by death by burning at the stake. And as he had to go before the court, Copernicus was a smart man and he said, I renounce all my writings. Obviously the earth is the center of the solar system. But as he turned to walk away, he whispered, but still it moves. On the second point about discovering a new world, it's been shown that Norsemen had sailed to Greenland and North America hundreds of years before Columbus, even though it was not greatly known and, and no settlements were established and no maps were made. Columbus sailed west from Europe in 1492 and then again in 1496. He made land in what today is Cuba and Haiti. He, and even though he was in islands off, or even though he thought he was in islands off the coast of India, he certainly explored the Caribbean. And it was not until his third voyage in 1498 that he actually set foot on the continent. And that was in today. Amerigo Vespucci made at least two voyages and possibly four to the New World, first setting foot in what today is Brazil in 1497, a year before Columbus set foot in Venezuela. So who gets the credit for discovering the New World? especially since neither thought they discovered a new world, they thought they were in Asia. Do they get credit since they didn't know where they were and certainly didn't think they discovered a new world? That argument was made for some 500 years back and forth. Vespucci wrote letters back home and he talked about his voyages and particularly he talked about the long coastline of South America that he explored that went for thousands of miles, even possibly to the bottom of the world. Matthias Ringman partnered with Martin Waldemuller to draw a famous map in 1507 that for the first time showed North and South America. Until this time, maps just showed one side of the world, 180 degrees. Waldemuller wanted to show 360 degrees on his map all the way around the world. And so he started with Europe 
and he went east using Ptolemy's grid system. The information on the size of Europe and then the size of Asia he got from Marco Polo and other subsequent adventurers who had traveled Asia. He was aware of how many degrees that would take him based on calculations on how large the earth was. He went from Europe across to the west, across the Atlantic, to the new discoveries of Columbus and Vespucci because he knew approximately how far they had traveled. But what he found was when he plotted it, there was a large void. It became obvious to Wolsey Miller and to Ringman that what was discovered was not Asia, but a fourth continent. It had, had to be surrounded by ocean on both sides. They were aware of Ptolemy's talk about a fourth continent. In fact, Ringman was also familiar with the poet Virgil, and he said in writings that there was a land beyond the stars, which Ringman interpreted as being in the southern hemisphere because when you go below the equator you can't see the north star and he just uh, thought that possibly Vespucci's discovering the southern hemisphere was in fact that new continent and when they drew the map this world with a new continent the Wolsey Miller map also is the first to show a distinctly Atlantic and Pacific Ocean even though they weren't labeled as such but this new continent they labeled as America, in honor of Amerigo Vespucci. Vespucci's claims have been disputed by many, and in fact, some dispute his four voyages to the New World. But the name America had been stuck. The Wolsey Miller map was lost, even though some 1,000 were printed. And Columbus, not Vespucci, was declared the one who gets credit for discovering America. That became an established fact that was taught in schools until a Wolsey Miller map was discovered in 1901 in a forgotten room in a German castle. While it's not accurate to today's information on North and South America, it was revolutionary for its time and somewhat accurate on the Atlantic coastline of South America. Amerigo Vespucci certainly gave great information that helped in drawing that map. Vespucci was not the first to sail west, and he was not the first to bring back information. But his information was used by Wolsey Miller to change the accepted vision, and it's proper that the New World was called America. 2007 it, or was the 500th anniversary of the publishing of that Wolsey Miller map, which first used the name America. It was decided that a five-year celebration of the naming of America was appropriate, and America 500 was established. It's taken years to get just a few local governments in each state to move forward with celebration, and Mayor Milton Tate is to be commended for recognizing the importance and volunteering Brenham to be one of those few cities participating. If a person still believed in Ptolemy, or or what Ptolemy believed, that the earth was the center of the universe and everything revolved around it, I'm sure that that person would agree that Washington County is the center of Texas and has been for the last 175 years. And 2010 has been designated to celebrate Texas at the, as the cultural center of the United States. You continue to see the center of the center, then therefore I think it's right and proper that the 500th anniversary of the naming of America be celebrated here at the epicenter. Washington County. Obviously, everything revolves around Washington County. Happy 500th anniversary, America, and continue to bless America.